everybody. I'm Gail Zemble, the Education Outreach Coordinator for the Nine Mile Creek Watershed District. And we're here today at Moyer Park, Harrison Park in Bloomington. And Nine Mile Creek is just down the trail that way. Now, if you're not familiar, a watershed is just an area of land that all drains to the same water body. So in our case, it's Nine Mile Creek down there. And if you think about it, a watershed is kind of like if you cup your hand like this and rain falls down on any of these points, it's all gonna flow down to the middle of your hand or the same point. And again, that's where these high points, rain, snow, any kind of precipitation, falling down and running to the lowest point in the watershed, which again is Nine Mile Creek behind us. So at the Watershed District, we do programs and projects to try and keep our lakes and creeks healthy. So Nine Mile Creek, Normandale Lake, all of these different lakes and creeks in our watershed area. So at the Harrison Picnic Grounds where we are leading into Moyer Park, this is a pretty special place because they have a few different ways to manage stormwater or runoff. Here in the parking lot itself, we have what's called pervious asphalt, which basically is just a type of asphalt that lets rainwater or runoff soak through it instead of running over the top of it. Now, we're right at the place where the pervious asphalt starts, so I'm gonna demonstrate what it looks like when water runs over impervious asphalt on the driveway here. It's flat, water can't soak through, and then where it gets to the pervious side, and we'll see what happens. So I have a bucket of water here, pouring it on the impervious. You see that it just sheets right over the top of it. And then as it gets to the pervious asphalt right here, you see that it's starting to soak through. It's not going nearly as far as it did over the impervious asphalt. And if eventually it rains so much that it gets to the middle of the parking lot, there are also rain gardens in here that allow the water to soak through or infiltrate and maybe even recharge some of our groundwater aquifers. So that's the water that's contained underneath the ground. So runoff is that storm water or the rainwater that falls onto the ground and hits a hard surface, like this impervious asphalt that we were just talking about. And so runoff can pick up lots of different kinds of pollution, including things like leaves, grass clippings, trash, fertilizer, salt, and all of this stuff goes down into a storm drain and doesn't get filtered. Now those storm drains are those grates that you see in the street and again there's no treatment for those. They don't get filtered, they don't get any of the pollution taken out of them and they go straight down to our lakes and creeks. So the pollution that we've been talking about through this whole video includes things like trash but it also includes things like this leaves, grass clippings, sticks, tree debris, things that are kind of natural normally. But if we get too much of them from all of our streets and all of our storm drains and all of our trees going down to one place like the creek or the lake, that can get to be a problem because all of these things contain phosphorus, which is a nutrient that plants need to grow. But if again, if you get too much of it, then that starts to lead to algae growth. An algae can look like a string of wet thread. It can sometimes look like a spill of green paint on top of a lake, and sometimes it can smell. So we don't want to create algae growth. So what we can do is adopting a drain outside our house and pledging to clean up this stuff and put it in the trash rather than leaving it in the gutters here for the stormwater and runoff to take down to the creek. So of course some water isn't going to make it onto the pervious asphalt. This water, or this runoff, is going to take all of this different kinds of pollution like the leaves and the twigs and the dirt and carry it downstream into a storm drain, which eventually leads to a creek or a lake. So all those storm drains that we were talking about up top lead down here to these giant culverts. Now these culverts are so big because they drain a lot of impervious surface, including places like 494. 
So you can see all of that runoff that we generate comes down here out of these culverts and you can imagine it'd be going pretty fast. But where does it lead? So Nine Mile Creek, which we're standing in right now, leads to the Minnesota River. And the Minnesota River, we know, leads to the Mississippi River. And the Mississippi, of course, leads to the Gulf of Mexico. So all of the runoff and pollution and things that we make here will eventually flow all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. So all that pollution that we talked about in Moyer Park in Bloomington doesn't just affect the creek. It can also affect our lakes, like Bryant Lake here in Eden Prairie. All of that pollution and all of those grass clippings and leaves and the phosphorus that gets into the water can dissolve and start to fuel algae growth, which can impact fishing, kayaking, the recreation that we like to do in our lakes. It can also impact the bugs and the creatures and the fish that live in our lakes and creeks. Your challenge now is to walk around your house and your yard and see if you can find areas where runoff would happen. So look at the roofs and the gutters of your house. Look at hills or slopes where water might start out higher and then run down to a lower spot. And then see if you can figure out where maybe water coming off the driveway or the parking lot of your building is gonna lead to. So my questions to you are, how have humans impacted water? How has the things that we've done as a society changed our water, made it healthier or unhealthier? And then the second question is, what can we do to fix these problems that we've created? The third question is, how would you teach somebody else about this? Maybe your family is wondering why you're just wandering around your house looking at the gutters. How would you teach them about what you've learned today in the video? Thanks for watching everybody.